G'day YouTube, it's Marty from Music Video Muster. Today I've got my box cutter and I've got a limited edition deluxe box set. It is the Fear of a Blank Planet by Porcupine Tree box set and I'm going to unbox this on camera. Let's do it. Welcome back to the channel where we believe that music is better on DVD and Blu-ray. This is a recent purchase and it arrived just this week all the way from the UK and I'm very excited to open it up. I've waited for this so that I can do the unboxing on camera. This is Fear of a Blank Planet, a re-release and it's got six discs and a huge book inside. Now this was an expensive buy for me. It cost 75 pounds, which when you convert it to Australian dollars and add on international shipping and import taxes, worked out to be probably around 200 Australian dollars altogether. And considering I already have the 5.1 DVD audio, it was a big decision to splash out and buy this. But the main reason I wanted to upgrade is that the new box set has a Blu-ray audio rather than a DVD audio, which has all of this in better quality, plus two small extra video features, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Anyway, enough talk. Let's do this. Let's open this bad boy up. All right, guys, here we go. I'm so excited about this. Now. I'll just try and bring this, the hype sticker up so you can read it. And it says, Porcupine Tree, Fear of a Blank Planet, Six Disc Deluxe Hardback Book. So there are five CDs and one Blu-ray disc. Now I'm not the kind of person who usually keeps the hype sticker. I know some people like it, but um, for me, um, like, unless it's something very expensive, I probably won't ever bother about that. I just got to be very careful here not to actually cut the book. It would help if my knife were sharp, which it's not. So bit of extra care. All right. Don't you love just opening up brand new items for your collection? But this is really heavy. I'd say this is a at least three kilos. Okay. All right. The uh, famous and iconic album cover there of Fear of a Blank Planet. The kid's face reflected in a computer screen. All right. Let's have a look inside then and uh, see what we have. Oh, so those are the three of the discs. And my guess is that the other three are at the back. Might just jump to the back. And yep, yeah, sure enough, there they are. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the way that they uh, put the, the discs on those little spindles there. They can come off easily, but um, I guess it's better than cardboard pockets. That's a famous picture. Uh, that's pretty sure they use this. Oh, and it comes out. It's separate. So I think this is like a special bonus from uh, Burning Shed, the online store where I bought it. And that's, yeah, obviously the nil recurring cover art. Very nice. It's like the size of a vinyl. So you could get one of those frames where you uh, put your vinyl cover in it and frame it like a piece of art. I could get one of those frames and display this picture. For now, I'm just going to put that over to the side and um, 
So a lot of this artwork is by Lassie Hoyle. I'm sure I have not pronounced that name correctly at all. But um, yeah, he does like a lot of porcupine trees photography and artwork. There's the band. Looks like we've got some, some liner notes here and some live images. Maybe some essays and some memoirs from the band. That's cool. So I'm a fan of this kind of stuff. I love looking at this, but honestly, after looking at this, you know, a few times while playing the album, it's probably just going to shit. <laughs> it's probably just going to sit on my shelf without me ever taking it down and looking at it again. But uh, it's so nice to own it in any case. That's a cool image. I don't think I've seen that one before. So there's a theme in this album about prescription drugs and how they affect children and how children are maybe encouraged to use prescription drugs to try and, you know, solve their problems rather than actually fixing the societal problem. Gavin Harrison, what an amazing drummer. He is so, so talented. They're all talented, really. But um, I particularly like Gavin Harrison's drumming. There's that image again. And uh, there was a video too uh, that was made, a kind of mini documentary. And I think these are shots which are either from that video or related to that video. That's a cool image there with all those pills. I'm sure the mini documentary is on the Blu-ray disc. These kids don't look happy, do they? Ah, that's the, uh, the cover from the Anesthetized DVD. Which was a live concert in Tilburg, I think. Great concert, that one. And some, you know, shots from the music videos. Yeah, I really like this book. My arm is getting so tired just holding it up for the camera here. Like, it is really heavy. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the hardcover book. Now, I'm um, just going to pick up that hype sticker again, which I kind of threw down on the floor. All right. Disc one. Now it says that CD1 on the hype sticker, it says CD1 is the 2024 Stephen Wilson remaster of Fear of a Blank Planet. So I'm not an audiophile. I don't know a lot about the technical side of sound, but I'm expecting this CD to sound really great since it's been remastered and you know, the technology just gets better every year and Steve Wilson's skill must be getting better all the time. So I'm sure it sounds freaking awesome. Just try and get this next disc here. This one's a little bit hard to, to remove. There we go. So the hype sticker says that disc CD2 is 
the 2024 Stephen Wilson remaster of Neil Recurring. So that's that little EP, it's just got a few tracks. And <laughs> I like how they, um, you know, put the, the hole in the middle of the disc right on that guy's face. That's, uh, that's an interesting concept. It's sturdy, I can tell you that. The book is sturdy. Now this is CD number three, and it is, this is the Fear of a Blank Planet demo recordings. So, you know, I'm not that interested in this kind of stuff, and I did not pay $200 for all these extra CDs. I just wanted the Blu-ray, but um, I'll give it a listen, and who knows, there might be something on there that I haven't heard before, which is really nice, but my guess is that I'm not going to listen to those CDs very much except for the, the album. CD4 or disc 4. It's so hard to get these, these things out. Three hours later. All right. Thanks for your patience. Now this is CD number four, live in Saarbrücken. I don't know where that is. Sounds European though. 2006 concert recording. So this might be okay. This is a live concert, um, you know, promoting the Fear of a Blank Planet album, I guess. So it might be good. And my guess is that this is previously unreleased. Hence the, the big price tag for this set. Let me try and get disc five out. I really don't like this. Like, it's good that the spindles are sturdy, but it's too tight, you know? All right. There we go. So CD number five is 2007 BBC session and live in-store performance. Again, not the kind of thing that I'm really interested in. Maybe the live concert, yeah. But, um, you know, radio, radio sessions and live like, in-store promotion concerts, not really my thing. Pop that one back. And last but not least, definitely not least, this is the main reason I bought the box set. This is the Blu-ray. And uh, for me, as a collector, uh, this is the most important disc. So this one features a new making of documentary called Fear of a Blank Planet. No, sorry. Um, it's got the videos for Fear of a Blank Planet, Way Out Here, and Normal. So on the DVD audio, there's no video clip for Normal. That's one of the main reasons I got it. Sleep Together and Anesthetize Live Visual Films. The DVD audio has the Anesthetize Visual Film, which is basically a music video. Uh, but this one's also got Sleep Together. So those are the two extra bits that weren't on the original surround disc and it's also got fear of a blank planet and nil recurring in 5.1 surround sound and the 2024 Stephen Wilson remaster which I guess would be in stereo and a three track concert film from Köln in December 2007 so that is a lot of content on the blu-ray and so happy that I got this. Yes, it was expensive, but if you are a diehard Porcupine Tree fan and a collector of Blu-ray audio, you'll probably not want to pass this one up. Now, this is an amazing album, and if you're an audiophile or just someone who loves high-quality audio, 
and good sounding rock music and progressive rock, then this is definitely something that you should look into. If you're only really interested in the audio experience and you don't care so much about the video and the, the demos and other things that were in the box set, then I highly recommend the DVD audio. This release is from 2007 and it should be a little bit cheaper now that the box set has come out. If, however, you're a die-hard Porcupine Tree fan and or a completionist, then you might want to look into this deluxe box set. Me personally, I got it for the Blu-ray alone, but I also love the huge hardcover book and the artwork, so this is a keeper for me. Thanks guys, that is the end of the video. Thank you for watching till the end. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed my content and let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see me make in the future. So until next time, see ya.